the focus of this video will be on the drill manual made by Brigadier General Silas Casey. Before we discuss the manual of arms presented in it, we need to discuss the history behind the manual. In 1855, the new Springfield 1855 rifle musket was being adopted and the Army sought fit to write a new manual for the new style of combat introduced with the rifle musket. The officer put in charge of this was Lieutenant Colonel William Joseph Hardy. Hardy created a manual where the march pace was quicker and the units were lighter to reflect the greater movement needed in the age of rifle muskets. Unfortunately, the manual was centered around the two-band rifle, the sword bayonet, rather than a three-band rifle musket with a socket bayonet. This caused the movements to be awkward for stacking arms, loading, and fixing the bayonet with the more common three-band rifle musket. At the outbreak of the Civil War, there were several different drill manuals being used by units. The Gillum's manual was largely used by militias, and other units had developed their own manual of arms. Hardy joined the Confederacy and was given the rank of colonel. He revised his 1855 manual in 1861 to better reflect the use of three-band rifle muskets in the Confederate Army. The Union Army did not want to use a manual written by a Confederate, so Brigadier General Silas Casey was given the task of creating a manual for the Union Army. To this end, Casey copied most of the moves from the 1855 manual word for word, with modifications being made for fixing and unfixing the bayonet, stacking arms, and the position of load. Casey's name was put on the cover of this new manual, and the Union had their own original manual for their army. Shoulder arms. The manual starts off with the position of shoulder arms, which is the position all the other movements are based on. The piece is in the right hand with the barrel nearly vertical and resting in the hollow of the shoulder. The guard to the front with the right hand nearly at full extension. The thumb and forefinger embrace the guard with the remaining fingers grasping the swell of the stock and just under the cock which rests on the little finger. Support. Arms. Burning at shoulder arms, the piece is brought between the eyes with the right hand. At the same time, the left hand grabs the piece at the lower band. The left hand raises the piece to the height of the chin while the right hand moves and grips the stock below the cock. The piece is then turned with the barrel to the front and carried to the left shoulder. The left arm is carried across the body and rests on the right breast and the cock is placed in the crook of the left elbow. Finally, the right hand is tucked to the side. Rest. At the position of support arms, the command rest can be given. At the command, the right foot moves into a T with the center of the right foot six inches from the heel of the left. The right hand grabs the piece at the grip to alleviate pressure on the left elbow. Attention! At the command, the position of shoulder arms is reassumed. Shoulder arms! At the command, the right hand seizes the piece at the grip and the left hand grabs the piece at the lower band with the thumb extended. The left forearm is along the stock. The piece is then carried vertically to the right shoulder, rotating the rammer to the front, and the right hand embraces the guard. The left hand slips up the piece and guides it into the shoulder. Finally, the left hand is dropped to the side. Present arms. At the command, the right hand brings the piece erect before the center of the body with the rammer to the front. At the same time, the left hand seizes the piece halfway between the guide sight and the lower band with the thumb extended along the barrel. The form of the left arm is horizontal and resting against the body. The right hand then grabs the grip. Shoulder. Arms. At the command, the piece is brought to the right shoulder and the right hand embraces the guard. The left hand slips to the height of the shoulder to help guide the piece. The left hand is then dropped to the side. Order. Arms. At the command, the piece is seized briskly with the left hand above the middle band while the right hand detaches it slightly from the shoulder. The grip of the right hand is then loosened and the left hand lowers the piece. The right hand re-seizes the piece above the lower band and the little finger is on the rear of the barrel, the butt about 4 inches from the ground. The left hand is dropped to the side. Finally, while the right hand is supported at the hip, the piece is slipped through the right hand to the ground and the position of order arms is taken. 
In the position of order arms, the barrel is between the thumb and forefinger, extended along the stock. The other fingers are extended and joined. The muzzle is about 2 inches from the shoulder, and the toe of the stock is in line with the toe of the right foot. Rest. At the command, the piece is rotated with the lock plate to the rear and the rammer to the right. The left hand embraces the front sight and the right hand grasps under it. The feet are moved into a T. The piece is at a slight angle. Attention! At the command, the position of order arms is reassumed. Shoulder, arms. At the command, the piece is raised vertically with the right hand to the height of the breast. The left hand seizes the piece below the right, and the right re-grips the guard. The left hand slips up the piece and guides it into the shoulder. The left hand then drops to the side. Fix bayonets. At the command, the piece is grasped with the left hand at the height of the shoulder and attached slightly with the right hand. The right hand quits the piece and the left hand carries the piece opposite the middle of the body and the butt is placed between the feet without shock. The rammer is to the rear and the muzzle is inclined forward about 8 inches from the body. The right hand grabs the upper band. The left hand then grabs the bayonet and draws it from the scabbard. The bayonet is fixed to the barrel and the lock ring is engaged. The left hand then extends to grab the piece and the right hand stays at the upper band. Shoulder, arms. The piece is raised to the left hand and placed into the right shoulder, the rammer to the front. At the same time, the right hand embraces the guard. The left hand is then dropped to the side. Charge, bayonet. At the command, the piece is raised slightly with the right hand. At the same time, a half base to the right is conducted. The feet move to the T position, but the feet are only three inches apart. Additionally, the left hand grabs the piece a little above the lower band. The piece is then lowered with both hands, and the left elbow is against the body. The right hand moves to the grip at the same time and is supported by the hip. The point of the bayonet is as high as the eye. Shoulder, arms. At the command, the piece is thrown up with the left hand and the feet face to the front. The right hand embraces the guard and the left hand slips up to the height of the shoulder. The left hand then drops to the side. Trail, arms. At the command, the first movement in order arms is executed. The second movement simply inclines the muzzle slightly to the front with the butt about 4 inches off the ground. The right hand is supported at the hip. This prevents the bayonet of each man in marching order from hitting others. Shoulder, arms. At the command shoulder, piece is raised perpendicularly in the right hand. At the command arms, the movement is the same as in order arms to the shoulder. I did not perform this move correctly, and it is difficult and awkward to raise the piece using only the right hand. You can see the weird hand rotation required. Unfix bayonets. At the command, the same movement for fixed bayonets will be executed. Instead of pulling the bayonet out of the scabbard, the left hand unlocks the bayonet lock ring and rotates it off the piece. The bayonet is then inserted into the scabbard and the piece is seized by the left hand at full extension. The movement to shoulder is exactly the same.
secure arms. At the command, the same first movement for support arms will be executed. Next, the buttstock is placed against the hip with the forearm against the stock. Finally, the piece is rotated downwards with the stock under the left arm. The left hand remains at the lower band and the left thumb is placed on the rammer to prevent it from sliding out. While this is happening, the right hand falls to the side. Shoulder. Arms. At the command, the piece is raised to the left hand to the vertical position and the right hand grabs the small of the stock. The same movement to shoulder from support arms is then executed. Right shoulder shift, arms. At the command, the piece is detached from the shoulder with the right hand and the left hand seizes the piece between the lower band and guide sight. The piece is raised to the height of the shoulder with the left hand while the right hand grasps the buttstock. The index and middle fingers split around the toe of the stock. The left hand now quits the piece and the right hand lifts and rotates the piece to the shoulder with the lock plate outwards. Shoulder, arms. At the command, the piece is brought down with the right hand and the rammer is rotated to the front. At the same time, the left hand grasps the piece between the lower band and guide sight. The piece is then lowered to shoulder arms with the right hand embracing the guard and the left hand guiding the piece into the shoulder. Finally, the left hand drops to the side. The piece can be moved between support and right shoulder shift. To do this, the instructor would command right shoulder shift arms while at the position of support arms. At the command, the right hand seizes the piece at the small of the stock and the left hand grabs and splits around the heel of the butt. The left hand then rotates the piece with the lock plate forward and carries the piece to the right shoulder. The right hand then grasps the piece as in right shoulder shift and the left hand falls to the side. Opposite this, the instructor can command support arms at the command. The same first movement for shoulder arms is executed. The piece is then turned with the barrel to the front and carried to the left side. The right hand slips to the grip and the left arm is placed across the breast. Finally, the hammer is placed into the crook of the elbow and the right hand falls to the side. Ground arms. At the command, the piece is turned with the right hand, the barrel to the left. At the same time, the left hand seizes the cartridge box across the back. The body is then bent over and the left foot is advanced next to the right hand. The toe of the butt is in line with the toe of the right foot and the right heel is raised. Once the piece is laid down, the soldier rises and assumes the position of attention. Raise arms. At the command, the left hand seizes the cartridge box, the left foot is advanced, and the right hand grabs the piece. The soldier then rises with the piece and assumes the position of order arms. When it comes to the school of the soldier, the movements were not any different on the Union or Confederate side of the field. The only difference is in stacking arms, which I'll cover in the video on company drill. Overall, the movements in the manual aren't too bad, but the movement to right shoulder shift from support and the general position of shoulder arms are both awkward. Additionally, the haversack and the canteen got in the way of secure arms. Tactics and weapons changed throughout the war, but the standard line infantry still followed the same basic school of the soldier. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something new.